Hayesboro students, happy Tuesday. Um, I just went out for a walk and I saw a few of you and it was so nice to see your lovely faces. Uh, makes me so happy to see you out and about in the beautiful weather. Um, today's story is inspired by a couple of students that I saw last week who were out in the Haysboro field flying their kites. Um, and actually flying kites is something that I've been doing with my daughters and we've been having so much fun doing that. So if you have a kite, make sure to get out and fly it. So today's story is called The Most Beautiful Kite in the World by Andrea Spaulding, illustrated by Leslie Watts. Jenny ran down the road. If she ran fast enough, she would have one whole minute to spend inside the general store. One whole minute to look at the most beautiful kite in the world. Excuse me, how much is the beautiful big kite? She asked the storekeeper. Nine dollars and ninety-five cents, he answered. Jenny frowned. She only had two dollars and twenty-three cents in her piggy bank, but tomorrow was her birthday. Maybe her father would buy her the kite as a present. The school bell rang and Jenny skipped carefully down the sidewalk, avoiding all the cracks and humming to herself. Step on a crack, break your back, take a hike, fly a kite. That night, Jenny fell asleep with all of her fingers and toes crossed. She dreamed of a kite that trailed sunbeams and flew her to strange far off places full of balloons and butterflies, heaving seas and pirate ships. Jenny's birthday dawned golden and gusty, perfect kite weather, she thought. She jumped out of bed, hurriedly dressed and ran into the kitchen. There was a kite-shaped parcel by her breakfast bowl. Jenny ripped off the wrapping paper in long strips. It was a kite, but not the beautiful one from the store. This was a homemade one. She recognized the light wood from her father's workshop. He must have worked while she was asleep, shaping the frame and covering it with white paper. Jenny's throat felt tight and dry. Like it? Her father said. Jenny smiled, but her throat hurt too much to speak. Instead, she ran over and gave him a big, hard hug. Eat your breakfast, he said happily, and we'll go out and see how your kite flies. The food stuck in Jenny's mouth. She only nodded. They walked out into the spring sunshine. Her father had a bounce in his step but Jenny's feet felt like lead and her eyes watered. It's the dust, she explained. Her father took a roll of string from his pocket and helped Jenny attach it to her kite. I'll hold the kite while you let out the string, he instructed. Then when I shout, run into the wind. Jenny waited until he carried the kite several paces away and held it up to the breeze. Ready, Jenny? Run! Jenny ran, but the kite only swooped and dragged in the prairie grass. She sighed with disappointment. Hmm, said her father. That's what I need to know. Its nose, heavy, needs a tail. He tied a piece of loose string to the bottom of the kite. Look around, Jenny. See if you can find anything to make bows for the tail. Jenny scuffed her shoes in the dirt. Why should the kite need a bow and tails, she thought. The beautiful kite would have flown perfectly the first time. On a nearby porch sat their neighbor knitting in the sunshine. Jenny walked slowly over. Mrs. O'Malchuck, please, could you spare me some wool? I need to tie bows on the tail of my kite. Mrs. O'Malchuck gave her a big yellow handful. Jenny took it to her father and stood back to watch him tie three bows that gleamed like sunbeams. That will never work, she thought disgustedly. Come on, Jenny, let's try again. 
Her father held the kite high above his head. Are you ready with the string? Run! This time, Jenny felt the kite lift as she sped into the wind. She glanced back, hopefully, but a moment later, the kite fell to the prairie. It was still nose heavy. Jenny stamped her foot. I knew it wouldn't fly. This kite will never fly, she cried in frustration. Her father came over and placed his arm around her shoulders. Sure it will, he reassured her. We just need more bows to balance it. Really? said Jenny. She looked thoughtfully at the kite. It had flown better the second time, and the wool from Mrs. O'Melchuck did look pretty. Her father smiled and ruffled her hair. Yep, that's all. Just two or three more bows. And whoosh, up it goes. Jenny laughed. She ran off to find them. Mr. Braun was reading a magazine. Jenny bounced up to him and cleared her throat. He grinned at her. Excuse me, Mr. Braun, but I'm trying to get my kite to fly. You need help? We need bows for the tail, and I thought... Jenny hesitated. Do you need the cover from your magazine? Mr. Braun pulled off the red cover. I flew kites when I was little. It was fun. Oh, thank you, thank you. Jenny ran to her father, waving the cover triumphantly. Dad, let's try this. Carefully tearing the paper, they knelt together and added two more bows to the tail. Once more, her father held up the kite. Ready, Jenny? Jenny nodded eagerly and turned into the wind. She ran swifter and surer than before. The kite quivered and rose for a minute. Then the wind dropped and it fell smack to the ground. Oh, rats! Her father pretended he'd not heard. He picked up the kite and balanced it thoughtfully. One more bow should do it. Jenny looked around. A movement caught her eye. Her friend Charlie was leaning against a truck, peeling a purple wrapper from an all-day sucker. Hey, Charlie, she yelled. Trade you a fly of my kite for that paper off your sucker. Doesn't fly yet. Charlie stuck the sucker in his mouth. It will if we tie another bow to the tail. Well, I guess so. Charlie sauntered over and gave Jenny the purple wrapper. Jenny tied the purple bow to the tail, handed the kite to her father, and eagerly held the string. Once more, he lifted the kite to the breeze. One, two, three, now! Jenny ran. Her feet sped lightly over the grass. Slowly and uncertainly, the kite rose, dipped, and caught the air current and soared upward. Jenny turned, feeling the kite come alive. Quick, let out more string, called her father. Jenny carefully unreeled. The kite pulled and climbed and danced. Jenny grinned, an enormous grin. There above her, soaring, dipping, and playing tag with a metal lark was a magical sight. The early morning sun caught the kite and turned it to dazzling gold. It was Jenny's dream kite, a sunbeam golden kite that swept the sky with a tail of bobbing yellow, red, and purple butterflies. Around her gathered her father and Charlie, then Mrs. O'Melchuck and Mr. Braun. They all looked up in wonder. Oh, they said, how beautiful. Yes, beamed Jenny, it's the most beautiful kite in the world. She floated across the prairie with her feet barely touching the earth. The next day, Jenny flew down the road, past the general store to school. If she ran fast enough, she would have one whole minute before the bell rang one whole minute to show her friends the most beautiful kite in the world. So if you're out and about flying kites today, I hope you have a lovely time. Good night and we'll see you tomorrow.